This is episode 63 of the Life in Norway show. Today I'm speaking to Sharon Hudson-Dean, the acting US ambassador to Norway. Sharon took a few minutes out of her very busy schedule when visiting Trondheim recently to become the fourth ambassador to come on the show. We talk about the role of the US embassy in Norway and the relations between the two countries, among other things. You can find out more information on the show notes page at lifeinnorway.net slash podcast. Just look for episode 63. Happy listening. I'm joined today by Sharon Hudson-Dean. She is the Chargé d'Affaires at the U.S. Embassy in Norway. Sharon, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's great to be here in, in Trondheim and to be speaking with you, David. Now, I hope I've got that job title right, Chargé d'Affaires. Uh, French is not my uh, the best language for pronunciation. Um, but as I understand it, that's a fancy way of saying an interim ambassador. Yes, that's correct. Uh, in our system, we have a lot of political appointee ambassadors, and, and all of our ambassadors must go through the U.S. Senate. So uh, that is what we have for Norway right now. We are waiting for the appointee to have a hearing in the Senate. Uh, and in the meantime, I am the senior State Department, senior career diplomat holding down the fort at the embassy. Now, life as a diplomat, it's something that fascinates me, and I know it'll interest a lot of my listeners who are based over in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Um, let's hear about you and, and what brought you to Norway. Sure, a pleasure. Um, I've been with the State Department for 29 years. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a senior foreign service officer. I've done a lot of overseas assignments. Uh, at, back in 2014, I was in Riga, Latvia for three years, my first time working in this sort of greater region. Absolutely loved it. Then went back to Washington and worked in the State Department on the Nordic-Baltic relationships. Um, I was um, filling in as a uh, deputy assistant secretary. So covered all the, our U.S. relationships with the Nordic countries uh, and really, really enjoyed working with the Norwegians. It's such a special relationship. But also I'm really intrigued with, personally, um, with the importance of Norway geographically uh, and in the Arctic but also with its amazing history with energy exploration and building the industry and now moving to renewables. I think it's a fascinating partnership that we have, and I'm really happy to be here. So the choice of coming here for this role, it, was, it sounds like it was a fairly natural one. I thought so, yes. I was very excited to see that the job was opening up at the right time uh, when I was ready to, to move on, and I jumped on it. So we've had several ambassadors on the show before, I think, uh, from memory, Canada, Britain, and the Philippines. Hopefully, I'm not missing anyone out there. Um, And it's always interesting to hear about the the roles and responsibilities of that country here in Norway. So let's hear a bit about the the remit of the U.S. Embassy here in in Norway. Sure. It's a very important and special role, I would argue, uh, because we have such an important history with Norway. There have been waves of immigration, uh, and we're always proud to say that we have nearly as many Norwegian Americans in the U.S. as there are Norwegians in Norway. They're an active community. They're very vibrant and have contributed so much to our country and maintaining the ties. Uh, So that's a foundation. I, I think almost every Norwegian I've met here has a relative in the U.S. or has studied there or loves to travel there. That keeps us close. But in addition to that, we have our long um, military and security history going back to our cooperation in World War II and then being founding members of NATO together. So um, one of the things that the embassy does is we have quite a um, significant defense attache office where our military officers are working with Norwegian military and coordinating both bilateral U.S.-Norway, but also in the NATO context. Uh, And in that regard, we have um, a big military exercise this month, exercise called Response, which is a a regular one we do every two years. Uh, And in addition to that, we recently had, a couple weeks ago, a visit by the U.S. Secretary of the Navy. It was his first trip to Europe in this position. He, He took over the job in August. Uh, and he made very clear he had Norway as his top priority to come and visit. But in addition to that, we've got our economic relationship that the embassy works on. I mentioned energy already with uh, fighting climate change, so moving to renewables and all the new tech as to how we're going to improve um, our emissions. Looking at Norway as an example on electric vehicles and how they've done that really well. 
Um, and then a lot of other aspects of our culture and our people to people, um, other trading relationships, the maritime connections are very important. Um, so there's lots going on there. Yeah. I recently spoke just a few episodes ago to the uh, Chamber of Commerce, the American Chamber of Commerce in, in Norway, and I was surprised by the, the scale of their operation, both in terms of the membership, but also the number of people working for them. It was a much bigger organization than I expected. Um, how do things work with, with the embassy? Can you give us an idea of, of the size of the operation you have here? Um, the embassy overall, we are, what well, I would say, a medium-sized U.S. embassy. Uh, the U.S., is for a long time has had the largest presence overseas in terms of our diplomatic representation. So the largest number of embassies and consulates worldwide. Uh, China is right up close to us where we are right now. Uh, but we're very proud that we are represented in almost every country on the planet. We have different sizes, of course, of that. And so here in Norway, um, it is a medium-sized embassy. As I mentioned, we have representation from State Department, from Department of Defense, U.S. Commerce Department. Uh, we also work in um, a variety of other fields as they pop up. So, for example, in September last year, the U.S. Secretary of Energy virtually signed an agreement um, with Norway's Minister of Energy regarding cooperation on taking spent nuclear materials that were used for research here in Nor Norway and then working with them chemically in order to make them less dangerous to the population. So in other words, uh, recycling spent fuel to make it safer. That's another area where we cooperate. Um, and there's all those kind of things happening all the time. And you've just arrived this morning in Trondheim, um, pretty much came here straight from the plane. Um, and you've brought with you the first sunny day of the year. So thank you very much for that. Is this your first time in the city? I came up once uh, in January, actually, to visit the um, operation here, the caves where the U.S. Marine Corps keeps equipment. So that was an example, again, of our military cooperation. But I just visited the caves. This time, I'll be visiting with the mayor, the university, go to the cathedral. I'm very excited for this trip. Excellent. So anyone who's lived in Oslo for more than a couple of years will certainly know of the old U.S. Embassy building uh, in central Oslo is fairly unusual for an embassy to be downtown these days. Um, there was there was a lot wrong with the building in terms of location, um, but there was also a lot right with it in terms of classic architecture and so on. But the U.S. Embassy is now located out in the suburbs. Um, can you tell us a bit about that move, uh, the importance of the old building, and, and what it's like now to be to be out in the suburbs? Sure. The move predates me, so I've only been in the new building. Uh, we moved in 2017. I have gone past the older building and know a little bit about its history. Uh, it is very architecturally significant. It was designed by a famous Finnish-American architect who did a number of other buildings in the U.S., like the um, TWA terminal in New York City. Uh, it's And it's still a beautiful building. So I'm sure it, it will continue to play an important role in Oslo um, once it has its new tenants, which I believe will be commercial. Uh, we moved out in, in large part because we needed a different space, a larger space, which represents the growth and importance of the relationship between the U.S. and Norway. We're now, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the suburbs, it's not that far out, <laughs> uh, and it's on its way up uh, to the ski area, which is really nice, as well as being right on the Tebana. Um, so my staff is very happy being there. Uh, it's a good location. It's quiet. We have lots of space, lots of sunshine. We are able to go outside when the weather is nice if we want to for lunch, uh, those sorts of things. Um, one of the things that I started doing when I arrived, which we could not do in the old embassy, we have marine guards that take care of us. This is a standard thing for U.S. embassies. And the Marine Guards in September last year started doing a boot camp for our employees. And so we went outside on the grass and he, they had us doing burpees and sit-ups and 50-yard um, dashes. Uh, it was a lot of fun. And I'm looking forward to doing that again when the weather is nice. Excellent. Um, we, we spoke earlier a little, or you spoke earlier a little, about uh, relations between Norway and the U.S., especially the history. Um, can we talk a bit more about the Norwegian American community because they're a huge part of life in Norway's readership and listenership. 
Uh, as you say, there are there are millions of people in uh, the U.S. who who claim some form of Scandinavian heritage, normally Norwegian. How do you see that play out day to day? I they're a very active community within the United States, and I have not, I have to say, directly met with the communities yet. I would love to do that in the future, but I receive their publications. Uh, so every uh, couple weeks, I will get one or the other. There are newspapers and magazines, and I, I love reading them, frankly. They're so interesting in what they're covering from Norway for their readership back in Minnesota or the West Coast. And then they talk about what their communities are doing and how they celebrate Norwegian holidays, how they keep the heritage alive for the children. I really enjoy the book reviews. It gives me a great idea of what Norwegian books are coming out in English. And I have to say I've ordered quite a few of them. Most recently, the the novel Will and Testament. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Uh, and then travel tips as well. Uh, one of the things that our Americans at the embassy really like to do while we're here is get out and see the country in our spare time. And so these publications will highlight that tourism aspect, which is good for us as well. Uh, we are very much hoping that the American tourists will come back now that the pandemic has seemingly settled down quite a bit and Norway has um, relaxed its uh, requirements and restrictions. We used to have a lot of American tourists here. Uh, they've really gone away in the last two years, and I'm hopeful that they will be returning. Well, I can tell you for sure, given the state of uh, our inbox at the moment, that American tourists will be coming back to Norway this year en masse. Um, we get questions every day from Americans about uh, travel, about history, about their their where they can find out details about their family and so on. And there's a huge number planning a trip this summer. Um, and if you've read the Norwegian American, which it sounds like you have, um, you you would have probably read some of my travel stories. Despite the British accent, I have regularly contributed to to that uh, newspaper over the years. Um, when it comes to more modern links, uh, oil and gas energy is is an obvious important area. There are a lot of large American companies operating on the shelf, but what other industries are important for for the two countries these days? There's a lot of the tech and innovation elements that are critical, and Norway brings a lot to the table in that regard. I made a trip a few weeks ago to Porsgrunn, the sort of industrial heart of the south, in order to look at the very innovative carbon capture technique, uh, techniques and experiments and other things going on there right now. It was a great trip. I had a chance to sit down with the cement factory, Norsem, which is the first one. That's the beginning part of the longship project. So cement produces a tremendous amount of emissions. The Norwegian government um, and some other investors and the company have come together to try to capture a lot of these emissions, turn them into liquid, put them on a ship, and here um, the company Yara is playing an important role because they've created this all-electric container ship, which will be used to take these containers over to the West Coast, put these liquefied emissions through a pipe, and get them back into the shelf. So reversing what we would do when, when we take fossil fuels out, essentially. And I should add, actually, listeners who um, are interested in finding out more can listen to episode 46, where we we looked uh, at CO2 storage with a, a researcher from Centaf who's, who's working on that technology. Perfect. So that, that will give them all the details, which I'm probably not explaining as well. Uh, it's, it's very important technology. So my main point is to say what's happening here is really groundbreaking and it's critical both for the United States and the rest of the world that we can perfect these technologies and we can use them in our very complex multifaceted approach to fighting climate change. So that's an important part of the relationship. Uh, we're also talking to many Norwegian companies all the time about other aspects of the modern world. Just in the last week, I've met with both Microsoft and Meta, Facebook here, to talk about issues related to data and privacy, which is extremely important, I would argue, in the last two weeks as we see um, as a re the Russian invasion of Ukraine and then the Russians cracking down on their public's access to data and the internet and the truth. Uh, so all of that, we have to be talking about those issues all the time. They're critical. 
Great. Um, another important role of an embassy is uh, from from an American citizen living here's perspective is information. Uh, so what are the most common questions you get from Americans about Norway and also from Norwegians about America? What, what are they interested in finding out? Ah, good question. Americans interested in Norway, I would say a lot of them have uh, some basic questions about travel, those sorts of things. What I hope that we do through our mission here is to raise American interest in Norway and a lot of these critical aspects of what we're doing. Uh, I would like to see Americans be more aware of world geography in general. This country has an absolutely critical geography, which makes the country beautiful, but also strategically very important. A big aspect of that is the Arctic. Norway has about a third of its country up in uh, territory up in the Arctic. They are a big player in Arctic issues. So is the United States. Uh, we have Alaska, our largest state up in the Arctic. Both countries are very active members of the Arctic Council, and we talk about these things all the time. We have made it a top priority to make sure that the Arctic is stable, um, that it is not militarized, and that the indigenous people of that region can can prosper and be supported, uh, but also that we can use it as a place for collaborative science and research and cooperation. Those things have worked pretty well so far, and Norway's been a real leader on that. So in terms of trying to get Amer the American public more interested in Arctic issues, uh, I think our political leaders are there. They're talking about it a lot right now. We will continue to do that. In terms of uh, Norwegians interested in the United States, you know, we, we kind of have it all. <laughs> so whether you're looking at travel, study, business opportunities, innovation, culture, uh, we get lots of questions about those things all the time. Mm -hmm. And we're always happy to facilitate. Yeah, come and visit, come do business, definitely come and study, uh, all the good stuff. So like all diplomats uh, here in Norway, you, you travel a lot. You're here in Trondheim right now. Um, you obviously have an interest in the Arctic as well, and you mentioned the, the industrial south. Um, but of course, you're based in Oslo, uh, the capital. And uh, I'm curious what your first impressions of Oslo were like. Uh, Norwegians consider it a, a big metropolis, uh, Americans less so, I would think. Well, I'll tell you, one of my first impressions of Oslo was actually when I was working in Riga. And I had a friend from California um, call me up. She used to work in the music industry. And she said, my favorite band in the whole world is playing in Oslo. And I just got us tickets. So you have to come and meet me. And I came and we went to see Radiohead. Uh, this is around 2017. Uh, but the thing that impressed me the most in terms of coming into Oslo was how efficient and easy it was. It was fabulous. I flew in from Riga, got straight on the, the train from the airport, which went right to the concert venue. The whole thing was efficient. It was smooth. It was enjoyable. I had a great time. And then the next day met up with some of my Norwegian friends that I had known from previous other assignments in other places. Uh, and we spent the day on the fjord, in the boat, and had a lovely meal. It was fantastic. So in coming back, that was what I was expecting, and it is actually my experience so far. It's really been just wonderful. I've made a lot of new friends. Uh, I've gotten out a bit. I'm a skier, so of course I've got my season pass for Trivon uh, right there in Oslo, but I've also gone to a couple other of the big ski resorts. And I'm looking forward to a trip to Svalbard, hopefully over Easter. Excellent. Um, we, we've spoken about some of the places you've been to in Norway. Have you seen any other regions that you that are of uh, particular note? Absolutely. I, I've, I've been to Bergen uh, several times now and, and took my daughters there. Uh, we had a really nice trip and then did the train, that um, that wonderful old train that goes up through the mountains. That was fantastic. Uh, I've also been to Tromsø, and we got very lucky because um, it was partly work and partly p pleasure and had one night of amazing northern lights. And so I, I felt very privileged to be able to check that box early on and hope to do it many times. Excellent. Now, as a interim 
uh, Ambassador, essentially. Uh, what do you hope to achieve during your, your time here? I mean, do, do you have a time limit? Do you know how long you'll be doing this role? Yes. So I am I'm a, in a full assignment. When our ambassador, when we get through the U.S. Senate, if he is confirmed and becomes our ambassador, uh, he would then come over here, present his credentials to the king. And at that point, I become his deputy. So I will remain the senior career person um, and fully support the, a new ambassador. Uh, it's a three-year assignment, which is normal for us. So that's plenty of time to travel around and get to know people. My goals will be very much uh, supporting U.S. foreign policy objectives and doing that with our great partner and ally, Norway. In the last two weeks, those foreign policy objectives have become even more important and serious uh, and very um, uh, grave in, the, in terms of what we have to talk about on a daily basis. So very much um, supporting Ukraine, Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity and the people of Ukraine um, who are being killed every day, uh, promoting global norms and principles um, as, a, again, sovereignty and territorial integrity for all countries, promoting the NATO alliance and our security and making sure that all of our partners are aligned, which we very much are at the moment, um, in pushing back on this current war in Europe. Mm. It's uh, obviously a, a difficult subject, but I'm about to move on to some lighthearted questions, so uh, apologies for that. But um, I'm going to ask you the same three questions I ask every guest on the Life in Norway show, so some quick answers to these, please. What's the best thing about living here in Norway? Getting to wear my winter clothing. <laughs> I, I love wearing scarves and hats and fancy coats and all of that. And for the last three years, I've been living in Australia and didn't touch them. Uh, and going skiing. I love skiing. And the most challenging thing so far? The most challenging thing is the darkness. That is really hard. Um, getting used to it. I was warned about it, but still living through those hours when you know you, you feel like you should be in bed but it's only 4 30 in the afternoon <laughs> i know the, these southerners that complain about the darkness so. <laughs> um and your favorite place in norway so far i think i might have to say it's my friend's cabin so i as i mentioned before i've made some friend norwegian friends previously in, in other places of the world where i've worked uh and they are now back in oslo they have a cabin on one of those islands in Oslo Fjord. One of the classic, you know, very small, painted red or yellow. You get out there on a boat. You you cook outside. You eat outside in the summer months. And they were very kind to invite me quite a bit in August and September. And that is just a piece of heaven. Wonderful. Sharon, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, where can people find out more about your role and the activities of the U.S. here in Norway? The U.S. Embassy in Oslo has a website, so I invite everyone to go there. Once you're on that main website, you can find all of our social media, uh, or you can just look for us on the social media platforms. We are on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn. Um, I personally um, do my own LinkedIn account, so I work hard to promote U.S. business ties with all the countries I've served in and certainly with Norway. Uh, I think that that is one of the most important things that we do here in supporting the prosperity of our people and creating jobs and making sure that our countries are strong. Thanks for joining us today, Sharon, and best wishes for your time in Trondheim these days and your three-year stint. Thank you. So great to talk to you, David. <laughs>